Welcome to QBank Pro Academy. The nurse assesses a patient with cough and fever suspected of having COVID variant BA5. What are some of the most common symptoms reported by patients with COVID variant BA5? Select all that apply. A. Cough. B. Neck pain and muscle aches. C. Headache. D. Fatigue. The correct answer is A. Cough. B. Neck pain and muscle aches. C. Headache and D. Fatigue. Explanation. Some symptoms that are seen in patients with BA5 variant COVID are fever, cough, neck pain, sore throat, headache, fatigue, chills, and muscle aches. This list is not inclusive of all symptoms reported. Many patients with BA5 variant COVID will report these symptoms. The nurse is interviewing a 33-year-old female non-hospitalized patient with COVID variant BA5. What medication orders does the nurse expect to find on the chart? Select all that apply. A. Throat lozenges. B. Dexamethasone. C. Acetaminophen. D. Dextromethorphan. The correct answer is A. Throat lozenges. C. Acetaminophen. And D. Dextromethorphan. Explanation. Many medications provide symptomatic relief for patients with COVID, such as acetaminophen, antipyretics, throat lozenges, and dextromethorphan. More medications are becoming available for the treatment of outpatients with COVID. The nurse is admitting a 51-year-old male hospitalized patient with COVID. What additional complications is she vigilant for in her patient? Select all that apply. A. Hypothyroidism. B. Inflammatory complications. C. Neurological complications. D. Tinnitus. The correct answer is B. Inflammatory conditions. And C. Neurological complications. Explanation. Can you identify the key word in this question? This question asks about hospitalized patients. Hospitalized COVID patients have more severe illness, ARDS and systemic inflammatory response syndrome, an exaggerated response of the body to infection, trauma, and other stressors. Stroke, encephalitis, and confusion may occur in patients. Milder symptoms are present in outpatients with COVID. A 19-year-old patient with cough and fever asks the nurse about the initial tests for COVID in most patients. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A, serological testing is recommended. B, upper respiratory test samples are recommended. C, nasal swabs of the anterior nares may be recommended. D, sputum sample testing is recommended. The correct answer is B, upper respiratory test samples are recommended. And C, nasal swabs of the anterior nares may be recommended. Explanation. Most is an important key word in this question. The question may use this word to help you differentiate between choices. The other two tests listed are used in some settings, but they are not used in most patients. True or false. In a one-year-old infant, clinical findings in this patient with COVID may include lethargy and poor appetite. A. True. B. False. C. Cannot be determined. The correct answer is A. True. Explanation. Symptoms in neonates are often milder than those in adults. Signs of COVID in this age group include fever, cough, lethargy, runny nose, tachypnea, poor feeding, vomiting, diarrhea, and respiratory difficulty. The nurse is assigned to take care of a hospitalized patient with COVID. What orders does the nurse expect to find on the chart? Select all that apply. A. Dexamethasone. B. Oxygen. C. Bericitinib. D. Coumadin. The correct answer is A. Dexamethasone. B. Oxygen. And C. Bericitinib. Explanation. Randomized controlled trials have shown a number of medications that affect outcomes in COVID. The nurse expects to see dexamethasone, supplemental oxygen, inhalers, antipyretics, and in some cases, bericitinib. The nurse is discussing COVID complications with a nursing student. 
What are some cardiac complications that may be typically reported with COVID patients? Select all that apply. A. Myocarditis. B. Ventricular hypertrophy. C. Heart failure. D. Mitral valve stenosis. The correct answer is A. Myocarditis and C. Heart failure. Explanation. Complications of COVID include a number of cardiovascular conditions including myocardial injury, myocarditis, myocardial infarction, heart failure, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, and cardiac arrest. The nurse assesses a 38-year-old female with cough, rash, and fever diagnosed with COVID. What are dermatological conditions associated with COVID? Select all that apply. A. Vesicular rash. B. Urticaria. C. Eczematous rash. D. Psoriasis. The correct answer is A. Vesicular rash. B. Urticaria. And C. Eczematous rash. Explanation. Although the most significant complications of COVID are pulmonary and cardiac, there are a number of skin or dermatological conditions seen, such as hives or urticaria, maculopapular rash, vesicles, petechiae, purpura, and limb ischemia. The nurse assesses a 62-year-old male with chronic headaches and dizziness discharged two weeks ago. What is long COVID? Select all that apply. A. Prolonged hospitalization. B. A post-COVID syndrome. C. Symptoms that may continue for four or more weeks and are not explained by an alternative diagnosis. D. Symptoms occurring during the first 28 weeks of COVID infection. The correct answer is B. A post-COVID syndrome. And C. Symptoms may continue for four or more weeks and are not explained by an alternative diagnosis. Explanation. Long-term COVID symptoms have been referred to as long COVID or post-COVID syndrome. It refers to persistent symptoms in those who have recovered from the COVID initial illness. The nurse is interviewing a 12-year-old female with fever and headache suspected of COVID. What symptoms are suggested of COVID infection? Select all that apply. A. Fever. B. Otitis media. C. Headache. D. Dry cough. The correct answer is A. Fever. C. Headache. And D. Dry cough. Explanation. On the exam, it is important to note the age of the patient. Otitis media is not a typical presenting symptom in COVID patients. Fever, headache, and cough are very common. How do we manage COVID-19 in hospitalized patients? COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus 2019. The virus was identified at the end of 2019 as a cause of pneumonia. It is also referred to as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. What laboratories would you expect to see ordered on a patient admitted with COVID-19? These laboratories will provide an assessment and a baseline for the patient's status. A CBC with differential, complete metabolic panel, creatinine kinase, C-reactive protein, PT, PTT, D-dimer. Baseline studies may include lactate dehydrogenase, troponin, Additional studies will include a chest x-ray and an EKG. Other studies that may be considered include a CT scan of the chest and an echocardiogram. Procalcitonin may be drawn to assess for secondary bacterial infection. General management for these patients should include the prevention of DVT or blood clots, as well as the prevention of bacterial pneumonia in patients at risk. Because of the similarity in the presentation in patients with COVID-19 and bacterial pneumonia, empiric treatment for community-acquired pneumonia is reasonable and may be indicated in some patients. Antipyretics will be provided for fever in hospitalization as well as inhalers. Metered dose inhalers are preferred rather than nebulized medications to prevent the spread of aerosolized COVID virus. Patients on chronic medications may be continued. These include blood pressure medications, statins, diuretics, and others. 
The use of immunosuppressing drugs should be carefully considered on a case-by-case -case basis in patients with COVID-19 because they may increase the risk of COVID-19 respiratory viral symptoms and increase the risk in severe disease. This includes medications such as biologics and prednisone. It is important to understand the severity of the disease of a hospitalized patient. While patients with mild disease may not need hospitalization, patients with moderate disease may warrant hospitalization. This includes patients with shortness of breath or patients with symptoms of cough and shortness of breath that affect activities of daily living. Patients with infiltrates on chest x-ray should be considered to have moderate disease. Severe disease is indicated by hypoxia, less than or equal to 94% on room air, or the need for ventilatory support or supplemental oxygen. Dexamethasone is currently recommended in many facilities for patients who are severely ill on supplemental oxygen or on ventilatory support. Some protocols include administering dexamethasone for up to 10 days. If dexamethasone is not available, other glucocorticoids may be used at an equivalent dose. Bericitinib is a medication that may be used for its immunosuppressive effects. It may affect or prevent the entry of the virus into the cell. There is some data showing that bericitinib may be effective and provide benefit even in patients who are already on dexamethasone. Another important drug that is being used in the treatment of COVID-19 is tocilizumab. This drug is an interleukin-6 pathway inhibitor. It is felt that blocking the pathway that promotes the production of inflammatory cytokines may provide benefit. Remdesivir is a drug that was shown to have in vitro activity against the coronavirus. It is a nucleotide analog. It is being used in some facilities in hospitalized patients, although studies are ongoing. Remdesivir has been evaluated in COVID-19 patients with both severe and non-severe COVID-19.